Hi, this is Mr. Minnick. We are doing tracing array list worksheet number one so that we understand how array list works uh, after having already studied arrays. Uh, the first line of code, we're declaring an array list of strings named snacks, and uh, we're instantiating it as well. Line two, we're adding raisins. Well, since that array list is empty and has a size of zero, raisins tax itself one to the end of the array list. Then bananas tax itself on to the end. So uh, at this point, just so you know, raisins is considered to be in position two, uh, position zero, and raisins is considered to be in position one, index positions. Uh, crackers. Crackers uh, adds on. I'm just going to use uh, letters to abbreviate here. I don't have time for, to write out the words. So we have R, B, and C now in the array list because crackers also appended to the end of the array list. This version of the add method, uh, we have two parameters. It's an example of overloaded methods in the array list class. The add method is typed out and implemented twice. In one situation, it's used with just one string parameter, and in this other situation, it is legally uh, executed with an int, comma, a string. So in this case, we have uh, the number two, which means add or insert, really, insert into position two the item grapes. Well, right now at this point, the C is in position two. So that C is bumped, I guess shifted to the right, and it's now in position three of the array list. The R and the B are unchanged. They're still in positions zero and one, respectively. So uh, as of that line of code, this is the current status of our array list. Grapes is now in position two. Notice how the array list dynamically resizes itself as necessary to accommodate this new element. Uh, it now has a size of four. Don't be confused by the fact that the, the word crackers is in position three because the size is how many elements are there. Well, one, two, three, four. Because we start at zero, it's often confusing the students and they sometimes get things wrong on the AP exam because they don't uh, understand that the C is really, the crackers is really in position three. Moving on. Now here we have the version of add that takes just one parameter again. So plums tax itself onto the end of this array list. I'm just rewriting everything else to, to be clear here. And now we have uh, uh, that sequence of elements. Remove. The remove method removes whatever element is at index position well, whatever int you put in the parentheses as a parameter. So poor raisins. Raisins was in position zero all along, and it's now erased. Not really erased, it's just, I guess, ejected. It's removed. So the B slides forward into position zero, and same for the G and the C and the, and the P. Okay, so uh, remove, I guess you could say as a, as a side effect, it re it decreases or decrements the size of the array list by one. You can only remove one thing at a time, by the way. Okay, the set method. The set method in the array list class allows you to overwrite an element. So we are overwriting whatever is it currently in position, index position one with this element, figs. And uh, that, there you have it. Grapes is now overwritten with an F, and I'm rewriting everything. We have B, F, C, P. And finally, the remove two, like we saw with remove zero, whatever is found at position two gets removed. The P moves forward. So after that line of code, we have a B, an F, and a P, which is now moved forward into index position two. Uh, there is a two string method in the array list class. Because of that nice, uh, convenient two string method, you can, in a client program, just do this, system out print snacks. The software, Java, I guess you should say, Java prints out the array list uh, in a nice, neat, horizontal fashion with, I think it's like spaces. I think there are like uh, square brackets. Uh, you don't have to know that for the AP exam or for this worksheet. Just writing bananas with a space and then figs and then plums is good enough. That is the, those are the contents of the array list at the end of exercise one. Let's execute number two and see what happens. We have a, an array list named snacks. Okay, raisins are 
plops itself in there. And then we add bananas, so we have RB. Then we have Oreos, ooh, unhealthy option, RBO. Okay, a get method. The get method pulls an element out of an array list. And therefore, uh, get one, that means we're pulling bananas out. And bananas is being stored in my snack. So my snack is like this extra little local variable. It's a string. So it's over here on the side, not to be confused with array list named snacks. And we've just pulled the bananas out of, well, we didn't remove it. We just, I guess, copied it. And now bananas is stored there. But bananas is still uh, inside of the array list. So there are two copies of bananas at this moment in time. So I guess you would write bananas here as uh, an answer. And next, next line of code, we're doing a dot add my snack. Well, my snack is really bananas. And we're adding it to the array list snacks. So even though there's already bananas in the array list, another chunk of bananas, I guess, another little uh, batch of bananas is now tacked on to the end. And that's what happens here based on this analysis of this worksheet exercise. Right now, we have RBOB in the array list after this line of code right here. OK, uh, set four carrots. So we look for position four, index position four. The R is in zero, the first B is in one, the uh, O is in two, and this B is in three. You cannot put something, you cannot overwrite something that isn't there. So this is an error. And uh, this would be, uh, this would be a, um, a runtime error, some kind of out of array list, out of bounds exception error that we'll study more, uh, more thoroughly at a later date. Now, if you just like keep uh, continue with this worksheet, because at the top the instructions did say that errors could occur, but let's just plow through this and pretend that that line of code didn't exist. Okay, snacks .get zero. Hmm. We're just pulling out whatever's in zero, which is bananas, or no, R, R, and therefore raisins is what is in the print ln parentheses. So the output of this would be the word raisins. Print it out. Okay. Um, so, uh, so far, so good. We got raisins there printed out. That's nice. And now we're doing a remove. Uh, remove zero. So raisins are gone now. They printed out, but they're gone. So we have uh, Bob as our contents of our array list, if you're following along with me. The raisins were removed, and everything else shifted to the left one. Now, this is illegal. We see snacks.remove0 used in a different way than it was used in the line above. It's a little known fact, but you can look it up on your quick reference, that the remove method returns something. It returns an element from an array list. We just chose not to, to do anything with that return value on the previous line of code. Snacks.remove0 did remove raisins and put it like on a line of code all by itself as if you had just raisins written in double quotes. It would be legal in Java, I believe, to just type a line of code raisins in double quotes and then a semicolon. Now that's stupid to do that. Because it's not system out printing. There's no system out print command. It is a line of code that has no compile errors. So it would compile, it just wouldn't do anything. That's pretty much what that line of code just did. It removed item zero and just plopped it right on the line of code like that in you know, a set of double quotes. So it's meaningless. But it that did the job of removing raisins. And that maybe that's all the programmer wanted. Well, on this line of code that I'm now analyzing, the programmer is being uh, really slick. He or she is removing item zero, which at this point is the first B, by the way, bananas. And that return value, bananas, is then being put into the parentheses of println. So at the same time as removing it, it's printing it out on the screen. So bananas prints out right there because of that line of code. Guaranteed, if you know this kind of a detail, you're going to get a 4 or a 5 on the AP exam because they will try to trick you and like ask you, would this be an error? No, it's not an error. It actually is a very good programming. It's very efficient. OK, the next line of code, snacks.size. Well, size is a number. It's an integer. And uh, the length of the array list, after removing that bananas, by the way, is just 2. The output is 2 there because uh, it has uh, currently Oreos and bananas are still in the array list at this point. 
And finally, let's work from inside the parentheses out on this last complicated line of code. Snacks.size is currently the number 2. And 2 minus 1 simplifies to 1. And that 1 now is found inside this set of parentheses here with a get. So we're getting whatever's in index position 1. Uh, let's see here. Now i got to stay focused. Currently, the array list is just OB. So uh, position 1 would be this sec this, uh, the, the remaining B. So bananas is what system out prints there. Just the word bananas. Because it was in position 1 of the array list. You know, when you do these problems, maybe you want to keep track of the array list rather than just rely on my little comments that we have here. And maybe you should make like a... Uh, some kind of uh, big box like we've done with arrays before and maybe you should just use your pencil and keep track of things by crossing them out and shifting everything right or left. Okay, there are your, your answers for number two. Okay, we're going to go quickly now do number three. Uh, shopping cart. Uh, now, oh, we have a little string variable called box and box has the string Wheaties stored in it. So keep track of that like on your so uh, scratch paper here separately maybe. Okay, we're adding box to the array list. Oh, I already did that for you. So Wheaties is in the array list. Then we're adding bananas. So I'm just showing you that you can use variables and put variables in the parentheses of the add method. As long as that variable has the correct data type. Notice that this array list is strings. You can't go and throw bugs or turtles in there. It's just uh, illegal. So uh, the next line of code is uh, uh, Wheaties and bananas. So we have... Uh, Wheaties and bananas. Cassidy? So now we're ready to add crackers. So we have capital W, lowercase b, lowercase c. Good. And then we have this variable called jar. And jar is storing the string ragu. Um, starts with a capital R because it's the name of a product. And then we do a set so that overwrites whatever is in position 1 with jar. So the b is in position 1 right now. So we have a capital W, a capital R, and a lowercase c at this point. Now we have this other variable, snack, that's stored over here on the side. It's Fritos. Uh, and what do we do with Fritos? Oh, we're adding Fritos up to the, to the array list. But we're inserting it because we're using this version of add that has a 2 comma snack. So 0, 1, 2. The Fritos is being put into the C position, the position where the C is. And so we have WRBC, if you're writing the, it all out, uh, w R F C because we just inserted the F. What happened to that B? Oh, that poor B. That poor B, Paul, got overwritten. When we did this set, the uh, capital R overwrote the lowercase b. It's long gone. Anyway, we're down here on this line of code, and we, we pull the remove, we call a remove, and whatever's being removed is being printed at the same time. So currently in position 0 is the, the capital W. So Wheaties is the output on the screen there. And just for the record right now, we're left with RFC. So I'm going to cross that W out just to keep uh, note of that. Uh, a string variable called Dairy. And wow, we have lots of little variables being used here. Please, please write things out on the AP exam on scratch paper so you can keep all this straight. Don't rely on your, your brain uh, too much. Set one Dairy. So we're overwriting whatever's in position one, which is currently the F. And we're uh, overwriting it with milk, uh, lowercase m for milk. And uh, we have r and c still there. And now uh, we system out print shopping cart. So it prints out uh, ragu, a space, and then milk, a space, and then crackers. Super fast. We're adding our raisins here. We're adding bananas. We're adding Oreos, makes me hungry. And now we have this, oh, we have a little vi int variable called counts. Let's trace it right here. It starts at zero. Now we have an enhanced for loop, also known as a for each loop in some uh, circles. And we're not using curly braces, but it's not required. I wanted to keep the worksheet uh, on one pa uh, pa page. So we're going to the array list snacks, and we're going to each element. That's what a for each loop does, even though the word each isn't part of it. We're going to each element. We're traversing the array list. And each element is temporarily being plugged in for x. So just to emphasize that, I'm going to make this variable called x. And the first time around the for loop, we're assuming, but 
even though this isn't a promise, but we're, we're assuming that raisins is put into x. So now we analyze this if statement with x having the value raisins in it. If substring of raisins 3, 4 equals a, well, that means start at position 3 of the string. So 0, 1, 2, 3. That s is at position 3. And the 4 means go up to but not including position number 4. Well, that second i, i is in position 4. So if you start at the s and you go up to but not including the i, that means that you've pulled out the s. Anytime that you have a, a difference there of 1, 4 minus 3 is 1, that means you're taking one letter at a time, by the way. Uh, we already studied this months ago in our string chapter. So that's the letter s, and if it does a dot equals, we cannot use the double equal symbol here, folks. They are strings. That would be a total error. Anyway, if s equals a, well, that's false, so I don't even need to go any further. All that work just to see uh, uh, for one iteration of this for loop. Now, the next time through the for loop, we're no longer dealing with raisins. We're dealing with uh, the word uh, bananas. So with bananas, let's look at whatever's in position 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. It's the letter A. Is an A equal to an A? Sure is. So we count plus plus. This little algorithm is pretty much checking the fourth letter of each word that's stored in our array list and checking to see if it's the letter A. So oranges, is there an A in position 4? Nope. There's a in position 3, but because of that substring 3, 4, uh, that ends up being false. So we do not count plus plus there. And now the for loop just knows when to end. Notice there's no dot size anywhere. It doesn't need to know, uh, have a dot size. It just knows to exhaustively iterate and traverse through the whole, the whole array list and looking for uh, the letter A in a certain position. So system out print count, one prints out. 